<clears throat> hey guys, it's Rainy Nights. Before we get into the video, if you could please leave a like and subscribe, I would be very thankful to you. I just finished watching 47 Meters Down. Now this is a shark attack movie, but just to be clear, it is not a Jaws clone. It is very much its own thing. Um, and overall, I really, really enjoyed it, and I didn't think I would as much as I did. I've seen other shark movies that obviously are not nearly as good as this one, so then maybe that's also influencing me. I've seen The Shallows with Blake Lively. It was alright. Um, and I saw this Australian movie called Bait that was just terrible. And then obviously we have stuff like Sharknado and stuff, and The Meg. You. So there's a lot of bad stuff in this uh, horror subgenre. This one's a gem though, no denying it. It obviously does have some issues, but uh, overall it was enjoyable. So the plot of this film, and um, there's going to be one major twist later. I haven't decided whether I want to spoil it or not. I don't think I need to, yeah. So there, there won't be spoilers in this review. Um, so the plot of this is we're following two sisters who go on vacation to Mexico. Uh, one of the two sisters got dumped by her boyfriend and she's feeling extra sad and the reason the boyfriend dumped her was uh, because she was boring, allegedly. So she is determined to prove him wrong and goes on a spontaneous adventure with her sister. Uh, it should be mentioned that the sister is way more brave than she is and daring and uh, eventually they are honestly stupid enough to follow some strange men into the uh, ocean middle, so the, the middle, middle of nowhere in the ocean, and they go on an illegal shark diving trip in a cage, uh, but the cave, the, sorry, the cage uh, drops to the uh, bottom of the seafloor, which is why it's called 47 meters down, and uh, they're running low on oxygen, they're panicking, they're often bleeding in this film, and they can't they can't just swim directly up for two reasons. One, because the risk of sharks, and two, because the pressure in their brains will... Um, I don't know the exact science behind it, but I know that they can't go to the top of the surface too rapidly, otherwise they will die. Um, their brains and ears won't be able to uh, take the pressure and the, um, the other what is nitrogen. So. Overall, I liked it. Um, I liked it because it was it was just a surprise. That's the main thing for me is that it's a surprise. Um, I'm not going to say these characters are extremely flushed out, but they're far more flushed out than your average B movie horror. And I wouldn't even call this a B movie horror. I would call this an A movie, uh, an A horror. I think the sharks actually look pretty decent. The fact that it's PG-13 actually did not hold it back at all, which was surprising. Um, the blood was fine. I didn't was not disappointed in any of the action areas. Um, and it's a very tense and immersive film that takes place in a bottle location survival scenario. And while most of us will probably not be in a situation like this, it's still somewhat relatable enough that you can still feel fear for the characters. And while the characters themselves make extremely poor decisions, um, I felt they were still versed and fleshed out enough to the point where I did care about them and I did want them to successfully escape, which is very important in bottle location survival scenario movies. You have to actually want the characters to escape successfully, because if they were really annoying or if they're bad people, then you wouldn't really care as a viewer whether they live or die, and then it kind of ruins the experience. But here, while one of the sisters is very coercive and manipulative, um, I don't think she deserves to die for that, so I was still rooting for both of them equally. But yeah, I, I had a really good time with it, and um, overall, thumbs up. And I, honestly, the best part of the movie is uh, it gives you this false sense of hope, uh, and then it abruptly rips it away from you in one of the coolest twists I've ever seen in a horror movie, or just any movie, period. I don't want to ruin it for you, but it's brilliant. Like, honestly, it is so, so brilliant. Just watch it for yourself, I really don't want to ruin it for you, but there is a major twist that happens maybe 70% into the movie, and it's going to blow your mind, I guarantee you. So, uh, where are the issues though? So the issues for me, I've never said this in a movie I don't think before, but so this is a first for me. I felt they talked too much. There was too much dialogue. Actually, I probably have said that before. I probably have said that in uh, the Star Wars prequels. I think I mentioned that they talked too much. Um, but this is more valid than that, I would say. This is like, uh, this is like a scientific thing and a viewer thing. Um, so the reason they talk too much and there was too much dialogue is because 
So it's an atmospheric, tense, filled, um, immersive survival scenario movie. And they were trying to be somewhat grounded and somewhat realistic. Obviously, we're going to have laps in uh, sharp logic here and there, but it was like otherwise, you know, okay, this isn't that crazy of a situation. This could happen in real life. Um, and it, for the most part, it did cover its tracks and did the logic okay, but um, better than expected, I guess. But um, the thing with the talking is, first of all, so that's the first thing. They talked an unnecessary amount because it's like, this is an atmospheric horror movie where the best scenes are when they're silent and they're just kind of, you know, swimming into the unknown. Uh, there's these like first person views where you're just watching them with their flashlights and it's dead silent and you can kind of see a shadow of a shark in the background. Those are the best kind of scenes. So not only is the talking kind of breaking you out of it because of that, but here's the more important bit. Um, so oxygen is a major player in this film, obviously. They are running out of oxygen and it's also explicitly told to us that uh, if they take a second tank of oxygen, then they may start experiencing hallucinations. So oxygen is a huge issue in this. And um, the oxygen level is extremely inconsistent. Um, like they would give you updates on how much they have left and it was just all, all over the place. I didn't think it was, I didn't think it was real basically at all, uh, the, the, the level of depletion of their oxygen. And one of the biggest ways you could have fixed that or made it more believable is if you had them talk less. A very common sense survival skill that everyone knows is that the more you talk, the more air you exert. That's just how it works. So with, to have these uh, these sisters constantly screaming and freaking out and just, that's understandable. Obviously they're scared in this situation, but I felt like there was a serious, unnecessary amount of talking and just chit chat between the two of them. Like, you know, they're at the bottom like, oh, what do you think Stuart would think about this? It's like, bro, I don't, you, we, Stuart is a no face character and you've mentioned his name in this film like six times now. Um, I get if they want to take their minds off something, maybe play rock, paper, scissors. Like, that's a very basic survival skill. So, that's the thing. As far as, the, the movie is very logical is what I'm saying. It's very logical, not believable at all. And I think it could have been if it was more refined and it was a little more uh, planned, just a little prop more properly. Um, it's not a big deal, but I'm just nitpicking here. And um, also, the other thing I want to say is that uh, the... So another thing on the believability, actually, how the characters get into the bottle location survival scenario is pretty important to me. And this was one of the worst um, times I've ever seen a movie do this, unfortunately. It's not a big deal, again, I'm just nitpicking here, but... Um, so, the way they get down there is so, so ridiculous. Like, are you, like most people in real life, even the lowest IQ people, um, like special needs and all that, I, they, no, not think, they know not to follow strange men in a foreign country that they just met onto an illegal diving, um, trip. It is beyond stupid. And then obviously throw in the fact that they're sisters and they're women, right? They are two women traveling to Mexico on their own and they're, really, they're gonna go onto a ship with five other dudes in the middle of nowhere. They have no diving training whatsoever and then you're gonna let yourselves go to the bottom of the sea with a, in a shark tank and also you just visually watch them doing the illegal chumming. They're throwing blood in buckets of guts everywhere to attract the sharks to them. It's a recipe for disaster. And um, while you could kind of excuse this by saying, you know, one, the sister, one of the sisters is extremely manipulative and coercing the other one by saying, oh, if you want to, if you want to impress, um, if you want to impress Stuart, then you want to do this, you know? Oh, come on, come do this, because if you take a selfie of yourself in a hotel room, then your man's not going to want to take you back. You need to come do the shark diving with me, and then he'll take you back. So it was, she was obviously training on thin ice as far as morality went. Um, she gets better, but like, she, at the start of the film, she's a terrible person, just objectively. But it does, that gets excused by the fact they're sisters. Originally, I thought they were just best friends or something, and then I was like, holy shit, how are they friends? Like, this is a terrible friend. The fact they're sisters explains that a little bit more. Um, but also, it's just naivety. I guess it's just naivety, and, uh, I'm not someone who loves to see naivety in characters. And there's also another additional la layer of naivety here is that the, one of the sisters' original motivation, the reason that they're in this situation in the first place, is to win back her boyfriend that left her because she's boring. 
well, if this was a half realistic movie, do you think, uh, <laughs> like just if you're a man watching this right now, uh, if you left your girlfriend, do you think her going on a shark diving trip would win, would that, would that do it for you? Would, would that win her back for you? No. That was probably just a fake nice reason. Oh, you're boring. It was probably a completely separate reason and he's sparing her feelings. Even if it is the real, real thing, it's like, why are you trying to prove yourself so much to this guy? It's, why are you going to, it's, it's, uh, those are the stuff you don't want to think about. And I'm only thinking about it purely for the sake of this review. I'm going to give 47 meters down a 7 out of 10. In my opinion, it is the best shark movie since Jaws, which is about 40 years now. Um, but it's not exactly a competitive subgenre, so, you know, it, it's still good though. I definitely recommend it, if only for the uh, tension and atmosphere and the genuine horrorness of it. Um, and I was surprised, again, how the PG-13 did not hold it back at all. I actually didn't even notice, really. Um, and the twist is incredible as well. So overall, I do recommend this film. I do think it's good. I was just being extra critical on it because why not? Why? I mean, that's what, that's what I'm here to do right now. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.